In this video, we use the method of least squares to predict future sales. A local fleet of Chicago ice cream vendors found how many drumsticks were sold versus how many sailboats from three local marinas were out on Lake Michigan. If 120 sailboats were out, how many drumsticks did they expect to sell? We use the Statistics 2 bar app to enter the data into the numeric view. Here you see our data being entered into columns C1 and C2. 20 sailboats out, 40 drumsticks sold. 30 sailboats out, 50 drumsticks sold. 50 sailboats out, 70 drumsticks sold. 70 sailboats out, 100 drumsticks sold. 90 sailboats out, 150 drumsticks sold. The method of least square shows the relationship between sailboats and drumsticks sold. It does not show cause. The cause of these is probably the weather. We use the shift lock key to set up the range. We see here that we have our X values and our Y values so that we can see what these data points are and we can see the line of best fit. After we choose the line of best fit, then we go over to our SYMB key, press it, and get our line of best fit. We now look at our calculator screen. We store the linear regression of C1 and C2 under M1. In a minute, we're going to use this to come up with our equation. To work the problem manually, we take the two equations with the values and plug them in to the solve function. Let's take a look at the end of the solve function. So we highlight it and then we copy. Now we see what the end of the solve function is. It's, it's the list MB. The first part of the solve function is the two equations put into a list with a comma. So when we're solving two equations to unknowns, we must use the list for the first parameter and list for the second parameter. Escaping out of our command line, we see that the answer turns out to be a fraction. Hitting the ABC key, it converts it to approximate answer. So this answer is the same answer that we got from the built-in function. Pressing the home key and scrolling, we see that we have the values for C1 and C2. We make C3 by taking Z1 times C1. C4, taking C1 times C2, then we sum up these values. So that's how we came up with the numbers that we used in the CAS view to solve the equation. We scrolled the window some more so that we could see the last line. The sum was gotten by pressing the toolbox, catalog, and sum. Be careful that we do not choose the app sum, that we choose the sum that's used in the home or CAS window. Line MB was gotten by pressing the VAR key, pressing all or program, and highlighting line MB5 or pressing 5. We press then the parentheses and the M1. Since we're in the home view, we just had to use alpha and M and then the letter 1. Remember that M1 was stored in the CAS view using the built-in function linear regression. Our immediate mode function line MB5 gives us the equation. By pressing the ABC key, we can toggle it from decimals to fraction to mix numerals to decimals and fractions. Before putting this expression into our equation app, let's take a look at what's going on with our Statistics 2 VAR app. Press the app key, press the start, and we see that we now have C3 and C4 because in the home screen we added these. Shift plot to go to our setup, we now go from 10 to 130 because since we wanted to look at what's going on with 120, 
we find the answer to be 185 so that we can take a look at this we will go from 10 to 130 a little bit less than 20 and a little bit more than 120 we will go since we go by 30 we will go from 0 to 210 x ticks of 10 and y ticks of 30 press the block key if we take a look at 120 we can see that the answer is a little bit more than 180. To look at our answer, we made this plot a little bit longer than our original plot. Pressing the SYMB symbol key, we see that we get the answer that we have over here in this screen. We put the equation in our function app. Go back to our app screen, hit function, we see that we have put the equation 249 over 164x plus 125 over 41. Setting up our range, shift plot, we go from 10 to 130, from 30 to 210, x tick of 10, y tick of 30. So we hit our plot key. We have set the go to function in our menu to the 120 to get our answer to be 185.24 and so forth. So we round this to 185. Pressing our CAS key, we have entered F1120 into our last line. This turns out to be 185.24 and so forth, just like we had in our plot screen. One last comment. Let's go back to apps. Select our statistics to var. Go to stats. Highlight r. This is our correlation coefficient for Pearson r, which turns out to be approximately 0.98. Over here on our calculator, we have entered the formula for the Pearson r. With the value of almost 1, this means there's a good relationship between the data points and our equation of the line. This ends our video on future predictions using methods of least squares.